This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It's Thursday, April 30th, and right now on Good Morning Indiana. The majority of parents, uh, you know, believe in vaccines and they want to stay up to date with vaccination. Another potential health crisis could be on the horizon as parents cancel regular doctor visits to avoid the coronavirus. How doctors' offices are trying to ease parents' fears. I think this is going to help change the way that us as therapists and the parents view therapy as a collaborative um, method. Um, to help our these children continue to progress. Virtual therapy sessions are helping families adjust to their new normal. Why therapists say this new way of operating could stick once they bounce back to their normal operations. The data shows that remdesivir has a clear-cut significant positive effect in diminishing the time to recover. A major breakthrough in finding a possible treatment for COVID-19, what health officials are saying about the new drug. And Purdue is delivering a special gift for the class of 2020, what graduates will be receiving to help them celebrate their next giant leap while maintaining social distancing. And it is 6 o'clock here on our Thursday, April the 30th. Thanks for joining us on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. And my friends Todd Clausen and Rafael Sanchez, social distancing and working from home. Rafael, are you warming yourself up with some coffee this morning? It is a good morning for a cup of coffee or a cup of hot chocolate, Todd Clausen, because it's quite <laughs> chilly this morning in central Indiana. It, it is. You have, I haven't gotten to the warm stuff yet. I still got the uh, the Coke Zero here, but uh, that has the caffeine and it's helping me get through the morning too, uh, Raphael. But you're exactly right. You might want to grab the extra uh, cup of coffee here this morning because temperatures are uh, chilly. We're sitting in the 40s right now. We're dealing with rain showers as well. As you look at Storm Team 6 radar, with some of the heavier showers are down uh, just to the northwest of Bloomington right now, making their way through parts of the Spencer area up towards Greencastle. Some spots showers as well uh, and you notice there's more all the way into the Chicago area and all those are going to filter down through the area they're going to be light they're going to be hit or miss it's definitely not a wash out of the day the showers are probably less numerous than they were yesterday the big difference though as we alluded to is the temperatures yesterday we were sitting right around 60 degrees today we're in the low to mid 40s 44 right now in Indy 42 is the current temperature as you make your way into the Crawfordsville area throughout the day today temperatures are are just going to hold pretty stagnant this morning and then slowly start to climb as we work our way into the afternoon hours as we inch closer to 50 degrees. But with the breeze that'll be out there, Lauren, it's going to feel more like the low to mid 40s throughout much of the day today. All right, Todd, thank you so much. And as people are heading out on the roads to start their Thursday, here's what you need to know. We still have the I-70 closure in the downtown area over to the east side. That's what you're looking at right now. You see the barricades put up and the police officer sitting there so that you notice to get over. You can stay on I-65 as you're heading northbound there between the north and south splits. Of course, we'll keep you updated if there are any issues for your morning commute. But right now, everything is pretty smooth sailing. Raphael. The time now is 6.03. We begin this morning with the latest on the coronavirus impacting our state. 63 new deaths reported in Indiana. That brings the death toll now to 964 Hoosiers. There are also 101 probable COVID-19 deaths in the state. That means the virus is listed on the death certificate, but not as a primary cause of death. The state health officials also reported 605 more positive COVID-19 cases. That brings the total number of positive cases in Indiana to 17,182. 91,550 people have been tested for the virus. Well, state leaders are investing in contact tracing to learn more about the spread of COVID-19. Now, this involves identifying people who have tested positive for COVID-19 and finding out who all they may have come in contact with. The state is partnering with the health and human services company Maximus to centralize that whole process. It's just another key part of safely reopening our state. The Indiana State Department of Health plans to use technology to reach out to all COVID positive patients with an email and a text and ask them to call our call center. 
Well, during the call, the patient will be asked to share phone numbers and email addresses of people they may have been in contact with. Close contacts will then receive daily texts monitoring them for symptoms. This new plan includes hiring at least 500 people. So the staff, they'll be trained by the state health department. The center will be open seven days a week for 12 hours a day. It's expected to all be up and running around May 11th. This pandemic has some public health experts really worried. We could be seeing another crisis in the making with the number of vaccinations dropping. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us live this morning. Kelsey, what are doctors seeing as parents, you're telling us, are canceling doctor's visits because they're afraid their kids may get the COVID-19? Yeah, that's right, Raphael. Over the last two months, they have seen the amount of P of kids getting vaccinations drop more than 50%. So according to PCC, a pediatric electronic health records company, comparing the week of February 16th before all the stay-at-home orders in April 5th, measles, mumps, and rubella shots dropped 50%. Diphtheria and whooping cough were down by 42%. And HPV vaccines were down the most by 73%. Doctors want parents to know they shouldn't be afraid to bring their kids in for wellness checkups. Well, some of the practices that have built in ways of either bringing those children early in the morning, uh, schedule appointments, so there's none of them in the same living, uh, waiting room at the same time. Now, if you do have concerns on the safety of your child at these doctor's appointments, you can always call ahead and see what precautions that office is taking to make sure that everyone stays safe. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. It is 6.06. Vice President Mike Pence will be back here at home in the Hoosier State today. He'll join Governor Holcomb for a tour of the Kokomo GM plant. The plant is making thousands of ventilators in response to the COVID-19 crisis. Those critical machines are being manufactured for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Pence is expected to tour the facility and get a first-hand look at how GM made the transition from making auto parts to making ventilators. So at 607, Lauren, let's talk about hiring Hoosiers. As you know, General Motors plans to hire more than 1,000 temporary full and part-time workers to help produce those ventilators. The company has plans to produce at least 30,000 of the life-saving machines by the end of August. The company received a government contract worth $489 million. Now, Ivy Tech Community College is assisting GM with the hiring process. So put this on your calendar. A virtual job fair is now planned for May the 6th. That's at 11 a.m. To learn more about the open positions and the virtual job fair, click on this story at hiringhoosiers.com on the RTV6 app. And if you are one of the thousands of Hoosiers looking for a job right now, we are here to help you every day of the week. Go to HiringHoosiers.com and please check out our job board. Uh, companies post their job openings on that board every single day. And there's also a link to the application process to the job that you may want. Just go to HiringHoosiers.com and you can see all of the jobs that are available in real time right now. Raphael, Indiana State leaders are working to make sure that you and your family have access to everything you might need during this time. That includes financial assistance, also mental health resources. Our Alyssa Donovan explains. Mental health issues and substance abuse disorders can be triggered by isolation, according to mental health professionals. So when Indiana Family and Social Services staff started noticing an increase in calls for help, they decided to take action. The data doesn't lie. Since the stay-at-home order went into place in Indiana, calls to 911 for certain issues and crisis hotlines have been on the rise. Suicide calls between March 13th and April 13th up 138% in Marion County. Domestic 911 calls during that time up 46%. In St. Joseph County, mental problem investigation calls up 50%. As we started to see these trends emerging, we knew um, that we had to put something together that was easily accessible to start um, providing a foundation of increased support for um, our state and our communities. Which is why Indiana Family and Social Services has rolled out this website, BeWellIndiana.com. To make it easier to find tools to help you through the pandemic, you can find resources for mental health issues, substance abuse issues, and financial assistance. There are also videos with tips on how to deal with this crisis, how to discuss it with your children, and how to deal with the mental stress. 
is important for people to understand. It is not a matter of if my mental health will be affected by this crisis. It's about when and how. The website is new and Indiana Family and Social Services staff are looking for feedback. If you want to check out the website, it's called BeWellIndiana.com. I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you so much for that. At 610 here on Good Morning Indiana, RTV6 is really sharing stories and resources that will help you get through this pandemic. Our Carmel-based company is really helping families by pivoting the services it provides to put families in a really good place. Children's TheraPlay provides physical and occupational therapy to children with special needs. They're now offering a virtual services to their clients to help families maintain structure and help kids adjust to this thing we call the new normal. Our Amanda Sorrentino has more. So what? Hey, where else could the bear live? <laughs> Forest. Sutton Brost is an energetic seven-year-old from Fortville. Before the pandemic, he visited Children's Theraplay every week for occupational therapy, spending time in a clinic and on horseback. Part of the therapy takes place on the horse, which gives him a lot of really great um, neurofeedback. Um, and then the clinic portion um, just really helps him with um, becoming more independent, developing skills. Skills like writing, self-care, memorizing his parents' phone numbers, and Sutton just learned how to tie his shoes. This kind of therapy helps the bros and other families maintain a routine. So when COVID-19 physically closed the barn doors at Children's Theraplay, the nonprofit boy. found a way to keep connecting with its patients. I was a little skeptical about teletherapy, especially with a seven-year-old. Neva Luttrell is Sutton's therapist at Children's Theraplay. She now does weekly sessions with him through Zoom. She says this new way of working with her patients is putting parents in the driver's seat. Trying to help their children adjust to this new routine that children with special needs definitely strive on and that structure that they need helping build that into their daily life at home. Neva had never conducted a virtual therapy session before social distancing, but she sees this new challenge as an opportunity. I think this is gonna help change the way that us as therapists and the parents view therapy as a collaborative um, method um, to help our these children continue to progress. Sutton's mom, Laura, has been working from home and getting help from Neva to find a balance so that Sutton can continue to learn and grow. Um, if we didn't have access to our occupational and speech therapists right now, um, you know, I'd, I'd be a bit concerned about where he might fall developmentally. And the continuation of Sutton's routine during social distancing will ease his eventual rebound back to the horse barn. Having the support system that we have, which includes our therapy team, has made this time um, d definitely more bearable. Working for you, Amanda Starantino, RTV6 News. Amanda, thank you so much. We'll see you this afternoon on the News at 5. She, Amanda goes on to tell us that almost 75% of Children's Theraplay's total family caseload has made the transition to teletherapy. The company says because of the success seen from this, they're exploring options to offer virtual services and resources to a broader community past the pandemic. Well, the new normal of our times is delivering an innovative way for Purdue's class of 2020 to celebrate their next giant leap. The university is mailing all 7,500 students earning undergraduate and graduate degrees a commencement in a box kit. Inside is a diploma holder, commencement program, and earned honor cords and medals. The box also has Boilermaker memorabilia and a flyer on how to download materials for their commencement, which they can watch on demand with their families at a time that's best for them. Purdue says grads should expect to receive their commencement boxes by May 15th, the original date of Purdue's in-person event. So Lauren, a potential breakthrough in the treatment of COVID-19. Straight ahead on Good Morning Indiana, details on the antiviral drug health experts say could be a game changer in the fight against the coronavirus. But first, let's check in on your forecast with the one and only TK Todd Clausen. Good morning. Raphael, good morning to you. We're off to a cool start with some spotty showers across central Indiana. So I don't know necessarily if you'll be working on the patio uh, for your work today, but you'll certainly be working for home, many of you. So we'll give you the forecast anyway. And we're just going to feature lots of clouds across central Indiana and temperatures that are not going to move much at all. We stay in the 40s here throughout the entire day. We'll break down today's dreary weather for you, but also look ahead to brighter days ahead this weekend coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. The time 
time now is 614. And floristyourhome.com. That's who. It is 617. There are now nearly 3.1 million positive cases of COVID-19 all across the globe and with more than 227,000 deaths. Almost 70,000 of those are in the United States alone. But more than 980,000 people have recovered from COVID-19 and that includes about 124,000 Americans. The time now is 6.17. There is some encouraging news this morning about a possible, possible treatment for COVID-19. It involves an antiviral drug already on the market. The drug is called Remdesivir. It is just one of the many medications being looked at at this moment. The nation's leading doctor on the issue, Dr. Anthony Fauci, expressed some optimism about the drug. He says data show that patients who were treated with the drug had a shortened recovery time from 15 to 11 days. The study was an international trial involving patients from different countries, including the United States, Germany, and the United Kingdom, just to name a few. Now time to check your forecast with Todd Clausen. Todd, good morning. A little bit cooler today than yesterday. Yeah, you know, yesterday, Raphael, at this time, we were running generally right around 60 degrees. This morning, we're running in the upper 40s, so it's about 15 to 20 degrees cooler. And to make matters worse, we have a bit of a wind out there uh, today, and so that's going to make our actual temperatures, which really don't warm much at all, feel even a little bit cooler. The wind not strong enough to cause any damage as far as trees or power lines coming down, but certainly enough to be an inconvenience if you want to get in uh, that neighborhood walk later on this afternoon. Sky starts to brighten just a little bit as you look from downtown to the north and you can see uh, uh, the clouds moving pretty quickly. We have quite a bit of wind not only here at the surface but in the upper levels of the atmosphere and that's going to move the clouds and the showers through pretty quickly throughout the day today. Temperatures set at 42 in Kokomo, 46 in Bloomington. Indianapolis is at 44 degrees. There's not a whole lot on Storm Team 6 radar right now. I'll take you down to the south, a few spotty showers near Spencer, or just south of Nashville as well over down into portions of southern Monroe County uh, there near Lake Monroe as well. And that is just about it. The showers will continue to rotate through the area from northwest to southeast as we go throughout the course of uh, the day today. And the, these showers will eventually start to diminish as we get into the evening hours. But here's a little bit of a closer look. Lafayette, Frankfurt, Lebanon, uh, Noblesville, Anderson, a few spotty showers. I'll move around a little bit here and you can see the green cast to Martinsville. Uh, there's some showers as well. All part of an area of low pressure right now that is centered across parts of Michigan. As this starts to push into Canada, it'll pull the rain with it and then eventually the clouds as well. In fact, you don't have to go too far off to our west uh, to get into sunny skies pretty quickly, but I'm not banking on much of anything in the way of sunshine for us throughout the day today. Uh, maybe as we get closer to sunset, the clouds will break apart and make for a, a nice sunset across the area, but then we really clear out during the overnight hours. Temperatures today, as I mentioned earlier, don't really move much at all, only to near 50 degrees, but with the wind, it's going to feel even colder than that. And then tomorrow, though, we turn the tables. That is the good news. 43, it's a chilly start, but we're up to a high into the mid-60s tomorrow with skies that'll be partly cloudy. The weekend's even better. Saturday, 75 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Sunday, there's the chance of a few spotty showers or thunderstorms as a cold front comes through, but the bulk of the day will be dry with a high temperature that could, for some locations, if that cold front holds off long enough, get close to 80 degrees. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Let's take a look right now over to our east. This is I-70 and Post Road where traffic is moving along up to speed this morning. Keep in mind, as you approach I-465, you'll need to get off the interstate because I-70 is closed in both directions between I-465 and the downtown area here on the east side. But you can see from our view here at Post Road, everything is traveling up to speed. So here's a deal to consider. If you're expecting a paper stimulus check to arrive at your home, PayPal is now offering a new service to help you not have to go to the bank. Here are the details on this offer. PayPal says it will allow people to cash their stimulus checks for free. Yeah, there's usually a 1% fee to cash checks. All you have to do now is take photos of the front and back of your stimulus check through the PayPal app. You can keep the money in your PayPal account or 
transfer it to your bank account. PayPal is waiving the fee for stimulus checks all the way until May the 31st. Well, reporting the news has taken on a more casual tone these days because of the quarantines, a lot of people working from home, but one ABC News reporter got a little too casual this week, coming up the very important item that he forgot while on live TV. That's coming up. Because we will get through this together. And the time right now is 625 on your Thursday. Raphael, it is time to talk about what is trending at 6. So a little advice for all of us that are working from home. Please wear clothes at all time. Please. It's a key thing to do. So let me take you to this fellow uh, ABC News employee, right? So a sign that things maybe get a little bit too comfortable for some employees around the country. ABC News' reporter, Will Reeve, had quite a week so far. At one point, Reeve was working from home and accidentally pointed his camera downward, showing that he was not wearing any pants. <laughs> Reeve was wearing a suit jacket during his Good Morning America report, and he later assured everyone that he did have on shorts in preparation for his post-work workout. I can uh, attest that I'm wearing clothing and my fellow <laughs> colleague Todd Clawson is wearing cl clothing and I know you are wearing cl clothing, uh, Lauren, right? Yeah, very important. I think a lot of people <laughs> could relate to Will there, but at least he gave us a good <laughs> chuckle this week. Okay, so look at this guy. He's not your typical mayor. He's the mayor of Kauai, Hawaii, and he's been posting activity videos on social media to help keep his residents amused during the COVID-19 lockdown. You can see there he dances, shows off card tricks. He created a lava lamp and he also gives gives cooking demonstrations. Wow, a man of many talents. He says the video breaks out the boredom and it brings people there together. Having a good time during this moment in our history. And as always here on Good Morning Indiana, we highlight our hometown heroes right here in central Indiana. Today, a shout out to Rob Napier of Trafalgar, who's a truck driver and apparently a very good fisherman. His company is part of the network of companies delivering essential items from food to hand sanitizers. We thank him and all of those doing their personal and professional best during this pandemic. You go, Rob. We thank you. Now we want to make a big shout out to our very own Todd Clawson. Though the weather's kind of cool, Todd, we'll take it. Yeah, you know, it's chilly, but it's a one-day deal here, Raphael. Tomorrow, if you're patient, we just get back into the sunshine and the warmer temperatures. Today, though, as you walk out the door, a uh, shot from uh, the Brown County area that I took a few years ago. Just everybody's kind of bundled up, and that's the way it'll be throughout the day today, as well as temperatures will be very cool. In fact, there's no warming, really, that takes place throughout the morning hours today. We go from 43 to about 44 degrees by the noon hour, which is the current temperature. And there's some spotty showers out there and eventually highs will climb up to right around 50 degrees later on this afternoon. Those highs though do not occur until late tonight. As far as the showers, they're with us off and on this morning. They diminish in coverage and intensity as we get into the afternoon and evening. So there will be an opportunity to get out and about. You're just going to have to bundle up if you choose to do so here later on today. Well, many Americans are still waiting on their stimulus checks to arrive, and that's giving scammers some time to try and get their hands on your money. Consumer reporter John Matarese tells us the tricks you need to look out for so you don't waste your money. Millions of Americans now have their stimulus checks thanks to direct deposit, but many more are still waiting for a paper check in the mail. Scammers know that, and so they're starting to make their move. If you don't have your $1,200 by now, you may have to wait for the mailman, but beware. This Instagram post says a local mail carrier just posted this. She's delivering these and the main people are senior citizens. This is not a stimulus check. Please beware of this and let your friends and family know. It says credit stimulus department with a check that could give a thief info about your bank account. Other folks are getting phone calls or emails claiming they need to give their social security number. Don't. The IRS will not call or email you. It will not ask for your social. And the check will come from the U.S. Treasury. And it's signed by the president. Not sure if your stimulus check is real? Ask the teller at your bank's drive-up window to look at it closely. They know what they should look like. So you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteries. Good morning, Indiana. This is Good Morning Indiana. Working for you. 
Now on Good Morning Indiana on this Thursday morning, here's a look at your 630 news feed. A man is in the hospital following gunfire on the city's east side. Police say a fight involving three men started just before midnight on Raleigh Drive. Officers say more than 30 rounds were fired, hitting one man. He's currently listed as stable. Police believe the shooter ran from the scene. Today, Vice President Mike Pence will make a stop in Howard County where life-saving equipment is being made. He's scheduled to visit the GM plant in Kokomo. That facility plans to make 30,000 ventilators by August. RTV6 will have coverage of the Vice President's visit later today on the IndyChannel.com as well as the RTV6 app. The ACLU of Indiana has filed public records requests with the governor's office and President Trump's administration. They're asking for information on COVID-19's impact on prisons. The ACLU and others have pushed for the release of nonviolent inmates to help slow the spread of COVID-19. So far, at least seven inmates and two corrections officers in Indiana have died from the virus. And President Trump has ordered meat plants to stay open despite major COVID-19 outbreaks. But there's some questions as to exactly when plants in Indiana will be in operation again. The Cass County Health Department told the Faroes Tribune newspaper that almost 900 workers at the Tyson pork plant in Logansport have so far tested positive for COVID-19. Well, the largest mall operator in the country says it's ready to reopen. Simon Property Group says it will reopen 49 of its malls across the country starting this weekend. And that includes 10 malls here in the state of Indiana. All of those will be opening on Saturday. Simon says employees will be required to wear masks while at work. There will be extra hand sanitizing stations and they will restrict the number of people inside the malls if they become too crowded. Here at 631, we do want to welcome you into Good Morning Indiana on this Thursday. I'm Lauren Casey. I want to say hello to my fellow co-workers, Todd Clausen and Rafael Sanchez, working from home again today. Good morning, Lauren. And, and you know, if we live in Indiana long enough, we always know that this time of year to keep a light jacket, Todd mm -hmm. Clausen, or a sweater <laughs> handy just in case it uh, gets a little cool in Indiana. Yeah, you're right, Rafael. There's two things I keep in my car this time of year, the umbrella and a jacket. As you mentioned, you never know when you're going to need it. And today is one of those days where we have both some rain in the forecast and also uh, those cool temperatures. As far as we go throughout the day today, we are going to see our temperatures just slowly start to moderate as we work our way throughout the course of the day. It's a slow process. Uh, we'll get into the mid 40s, though, as we work our way into the nine and 10 o'clock hour with lots of clouds and a few spotty showers that'll be around and you can see some of these showers on storm team six radar they're a little more numerous right now south of uh, indianapolis as you make your way into the bloomington area over towards Terre Haute as well and they're all part of an area of low pressure that is spinning to our north eventually that low pushes off to the northwest and that will start to northeast rather and that'll start to dry us out a little bit and it'll allow the temperatures to slowly creep back up into the 50s for some of you as we work our way into the afternoon hours. However, there will be a pretty good breeze throughout the day today. So those temperatures you see on the screen there are actually going to feel a little bit cooler. Better weather is ahead. More on that coming up in just a little bit. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Here's a look right now at your commute over on the west side. This is our in-dot traffic camera at I-465 in West 10th Street, where you can see traffic is picking up for your Thursday. Everything's moving along up to speed northbound and southbound. We'll keep our eyes on your roads throughout the morning, though, and let you know if there are any major delays you need to watch out for. The time now is 6.33 here on Good Morning Indiana, and we're still waiting to get more information on what led to that fatal shooting of that mail carrier on the city's east side. Here's the latest as we know it right now. We first reported the arrest of a suspect yesterday on the news at noon here on RTV6. That suspect is 21-year-old Tony Cushenberry. IMPD tells us he was taken into custody late Tuesday night. Postal inspectors and Metro Police say that Cushenberry shot Angela Summers Monday afternoon on Denny Street as she was working to deliver mail in that area. She later died at the hospital. The postal inspectors and IMPD say the U.S. Attorney's Office will determine what charges Cushenberry will face. Well, people who knew Angela Summers are now focused on paying tribute to her and supporting her family, including her teenage daughter. Tracy Wagner is among those who knew Summers and how hard she worked. That's why Wagner printed yard signs to post in her neighborhood as a way to honor Angela and to raise money to help her child who is now on her own. 
if we sell these signs after we're done selling them, whatever money is left over um, or donated, we'd like to donate it to Angela Summer's 14 year old daughter. Warner says the signs honoring Angela Summers are currently being ordered. The time now is 634. The coronavirus pandemic has some health experts really worried as they're seeing a drop in vaccinations involving children. Our Kelsey Anderson is live this morning with doctors are seeing as parents are worried that their kids may get COVID-19. Kelsey, fill us in and good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Raphael. So what we're learning right now is that vaccinations over the last two months have dropped more than 50%. So according to PCC, a pediatric electronic health records company, comparing the week of February 16th before all the stay at home orders in April 5th, measles, mumps and rubella shots dropped 50%. Diphtheria and whooping cough were down by 42% and HPV vaccines were down the most at 73%. We spoke to an expecting mother about her recent trip to the doctor and she says the process was eerie, but she knows it's important to take these precautions so parents can feel safe sending their kids in. You know, I went to our hospital and I got asked, I got screened because my doctor's in the hospital. So they have all the doors shut down, but like one and you get screened and they take your temperature and ask why you're there because nobody can have visitors. Now, most doctor's offices right now have special time set just for kids to get their vaccines and have those appointments. And most waiting rooms are closed and families are sitting in their cars until the doctor is ready and that's when the child is brought in. Now, if you have any worries about taking your kid, uh, the doctor suggests that you call ahead and ask them what precautions they're taking to make sure that you and your child are safe. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, great advice there. Thank you so much. It is 636. More than 4,000 casino employees at three different locations have been furloughed because of the pandemic. The furloughed employees work at Harris Hoosier Park, Indiana Grand Racing and Casino in Shelbyville, and Horseshoe Casino in Hammond. Notices by the casino owners say the furloughs are expected to be temporary. However, the notice says they could be permanent depending on the economic impact of the shutdown. Our commitment to connecting you, connecting you to jobs through our hiring Hoosiers campaign is something we take serious every day, something that we've been doing now for the two years now. So we know it's key during this pandemic. So Apex Energy Solutions specializes in eco-friendly remodeling products. Many of its sales reps used to work in the hospitality industry. The company says sales positions may be a good fit for laid off restaurants or hotel employees who are interested in making a career change. We have found that Apex is, is the perfect uh, vehicle for those individuals during this challenging time that want to reinvent themselves, someone that wants to redevelop themselves in a new way, someone that maybe um, just have, hasn't found the right opportunity to step out of their comfort zone. We think right now is that right time. Apex is looking to fill around 12 sales positions at its headquarters in Zinesville. A sales partners go through a three-week training program. For more information on this and many other job offers, go to HiringHoosiers.com. Raphael, we do have some good news if you like donuts. Long's Bakery says it will reopen tomorrow. Long's posted the news on Facebook and Instagram. There will be some restrictions put in place. Only four customers will be allowed inside at a time. Employees will have masks and gloves. There are two locations. One is on North Tremont Street and West 16th Street on the west side. The other is on the south side along East Southport Road. Sign me up, Lord. I will provide all donuts for the entire crew tomorrow. <laughs> Be safe while you're doing that as well. Virtual therapy sessions are helping families adjust to their new normal. Next on Good Morning Indiana, why some therapists say this new way of operating could stick once they bounce back to their normal operations. You're watching Good Morning Indiana right here on RTD6. U.S. Warehouse. Welcome back. Indiana state leaders are working to make sure that you and your family have access to everything you might need during this time. Our Alyssa Donovan tells us that includes resources to make sure you're taking care of your mental health. Indiana Family and Social Services staff is working to make things easier for you and your family during this time, which is why they've created a website that has all of the resources you might need. A recent trend in rising suicide calls to 911 and crisis hotlines was part of the reason Indiana Family and Social Services staff decided to create this, 
the Be Well Indiana website. It's a one-stop shop for mental health resources, COVID-19 information, substance abuse information, and financial assistance details. Rachel Halleck, the Deputy Director of Mental Health and Addiction, says isolation can trigger mental health issues, but having easily accessible resources can make a major difference. That if, if a person has the right tools in their toolbox, um, that they are able to actually address any concerns in the realm of mental health or substance use disorder on their own or with their loved ones before needing to seek out professional help. But if they don't have those tools, uh, then whatever symptoms it is that they are experiencing tend to be exacerbated and get worse. Along with resources, there are also videos with tips on how to deal with a crisis and how to discuss it with your kids. The website is new and Indiana Family and Social Services staff are looking for feedback. If you want to check out the website, it's called BeWellIndiana.com. I'm Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you for that great information there. They shared their story on hiring Hoosiers here on RTV6 and now they're seeing a lot of success. Coming up on Good Morning Indiana, more on why this company's clothes are getting more popular. Lauren? And Raphael, they wanted to raise money for a good cause, but was the challenge they took too hot for TV? Up next, how a couple of guys from Greenfield had quite different reactions to the hottest tortilla chip in the world. Todd. <laughs> and Lauren, you might want to eat a hot tortilla chip here today to warm up a little bit because it's going to be a chilly day and we're dealing with rain showers as well. Here's your umbrella meter. About 60% chance of showers today. The good news is we're dry Friday, Saturday, and just the chance of some storms on Sunday. We'll lay out this forecast for you in detail coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. Use the time now, 643. We'll see you in a few minutes. And floristyourhome.com. That's who. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana at 645. Here's a live look at traffic on the northeast side, 465 near Fall Creek Road. No crashes to report around the metro area at this early hour. Now to a hiring Hoosier success story. The owners of a company we told you about yesterday here on Good Morning Indiana say they're already seeing a boost in order since sharing their story. Kelson Carter is a plumber and his sister Lauren is a career coach. Together they founded an apparel company called Trade Life. The clothing promotes pride in the skilled trades, jobs that are typically seen as less glamorous, but now more than ever, those jobs are proving to be essential. What's my industry going to look like in five years and 10 years, or how is my industry really going to be impacted by the coronavirus? It's, it's a really good time for people to evaluate their industry that they're in, and if they've had an interest in the trades um, before in their life, then maybe now's the time to check it out because it's in really high demand. Well, the Trade Life website also includes a blog with posts about what it's like working in the skilled trades, ways to get involved in apprenticeships and summer jobs, and much more. A lot of helpful information. You can find it all at HiringHoosiers.com. Okay, Raphael, so I don't know if you've heard about this yet, but it's called the Hot Chip Challenge. A company called Packy makes these tortilla chips with the Carolina Reaper chili. It's the world's hottest pepper, supposedly a thousand times hotter than a jalapeno. So, Lauren, I read ahead just a little bit, so in case you want to give it a try, I have three water bottles just for you. Oh. I'll drop, drop them at the station later today. Okay, so here's thank the challenge. You. <laughs> you have to eat one chip and make it three minutes without taking anything down, washing it down during this challenge. So check this out. Two members of the maintenance crew at Hancock Regional Hospital decided to take the challenge. They recorded it as a way of raising money for a food banks in Hancock County. So Dave Morgan is on your left, James Neal is on your right for this good cause. They had their cold drinks ready to go, but it seems only one could truly handle the heat. All right, so we're trying to go three minutes, ooh, <laughs> without drinking any milk. <laughs> Oh God, my body is tingling. Checking you guys out. Oh, I'm gonna puke. Oh, don't puke. Don't do that. But listen, Dave barely made it three minutes. But check out James, cool <laughs> as a cucumber. Lauren, James ended up lasting more than eight minutes. Ooh. Eight minutes before he needed a swig of his diet no, Mountain Dew. Oh my goodness! Wow. I love how Dave's trying Dew. to like calm himself down there. Like, I know. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I don't think like Todd anything Clawson spicy. Could do this. So no, 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 no. Yeah, Todd. I don't Todd know. Clawson Todd could do, do it. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Todd he, is our you know, I like, He could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I I do like spicy wings and spicy stuff, but I don't know after seeing his reaction. I don't. I, I'm not sure if I can handle that or not. <laughs> maybe 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 a little piece, little piece of uh, uh, the tortilla chip, not the whole thing. So all right, outside right now, uh, the skies are starting to brighten just a little bit, but you see, there's lots of clouds out there. And temperatures, uh, they are very chilly. We're sitting at 42 in Kokomo, 46 in Bloomington. 44 is the current temperature in Indianapolis. And there are some rain showers in the forecast today, but our big issue is the temperatures. Just simply because here we are on the last day of April, and we're just not going to warm much at all. We're going to stay in the 40s throughout much of the day. Some of you will climb up into the low 50s with those highs occurring pretty late uh, in the day. The temperatures this morning just very stagnant. They just won't really move much at all. Storm Team 6 radar does feature a few showers. You notice the heaviest of the showers are down here in the Bloomington area and pushing down in towards uh, Seymour in Bedford as well. So there's the view in Bloomington as these showers stroll through. And then as we come down here towards the Seymour area, you can see uh, there's some light rain currently falling. And it's all part of this system that is slowly making its way through the area. This is the same system that gave us the rain yesterday. Some light rain in Crawfordsville, Frankfurt over towards Kokomo. Uh, but eventually this area of low pressure, which is centered across northern Indiana right now, uh, this is going to finally start to push its way off into Canada and that will eventually start to see uh, the rain decrease and also the clouds. In fact, I am hopeful for even a little bit of sunshine as we work our way into uh, the evening hours. The showers will diminish and with sunset now, uh, not until after 8 o'clock, uh, after 8.30 for that matter, uh, we should see a little bit of sunshine, I think, to round out uh, this Thursday and that'll set us up for what will be a nice stretch of weather just in time for the weekend. Friday starts off off a little cool at 43 degrees, but we warm into the mid 60s in the afternoon with skies that'll be partly cloudy across the area. The weekend is even better. Saturday, 74. It's a great day with partly cloudy skies. And then Sunday, even warmer, anywhere from 75 to 80 degrees for the temperature. If we can keep the storms off uh, long enough, it's a cold front that comes through on Sunday, or I should call it a cool front because the air behind it isn't really that much colder. We'll go from 77. Sunday to 70 on Monday, uh, but those storms are only going to be for a brief period on Sunday, mainly late in the day, so most of your Sunday is dry as well. So let's just get through today together with the showers and these cooler temperatures, and then warmer, more spring-like air arrives right on cue as we start the month of May. All right, Todd, thank you so much. We're keeping a close eye on traffic this morning. Here's a live look at I-65, a little south of 38th Street. No delays to slow you down. Everything's traveling up to speed. Well, you're still out of work, and it's that time of the month when rent or mortgage payment may be due. So coming up here on this hour of Good Morning America, you can find out how you can find help making the payment if you need to. It's a staple of the classroom now, but just a few decades ago, it was a brand new way to try to keep kids away from drugs. We take a closer look next on our Throwback Thursday right here on Good Morning Indiana. It is time to open the vault for Throwback Thursday. So if you attended grade school back in the <clears throat> 80s or the 90s, the word dare was more than likely part of a school prevention program. Yeah, Raphael, as a elementary school student in the 90s, I can confirm that this was part of our school program. <laughs> DARE stands for Drug Abuse Resistance Education. It was founded actually out in Los Angeles. Then it made its way uh -huh. to Lawrence in 1990. That's when Sergeant Brian Boulder of the Lawrence Police Department started teaching DARE classes. Former Channel 6 reporter Angela Kane yeah. sat in on one of them. The class is a mixture of nonsensical, undrug-related fun. The Miss Piggy cheer, ready? <laughs> And then there's the Hulk Hogan. And serious facts. The lesson today, alternatives to using drugs. One of the alternatives to taking drugs is exercising. It's good for you. Makes you feel better. It relieves the stress that you have. It also makes you stronger. 
That alternative exercise was taken literally today. The kids actually came outside to play a game of dodgeball. Well, you can see this and all of our other Throwback Thursday stories right now at the IndieChannel.com slash history. Is that what we wore in the 90s, Raphael Todd? <laughs> <laughs> well, in the 90s, I was in college. So okay. where were you, Lauren? Don't answer that question. Don't I won't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I remember Dare, though. I, I, yeah. I won some sort of contest, and they gave me the Dare Bear. You remember the Dare Bear? That was, uh, yeah. that, that was, yes. that was in middle school. So, <laughs> All right. Outside right now, we're dealing with clouds and a few spotty showers. The big issue today is going to be the temperatures. We are not going to warm much at all throughout the day today. So prepare yourself for a chilly and breezy day. But the good news is warmer days are ahead. We're into the 60s tomorrow with partly cloudy skies and then into the 70s for the weekend. All right, Todd, thank you so much. And thank you all of you at home for watching. We're back here in 25 minutes and all throughout Good Morning America. Have a great day.